All for the love of. Maybe. No. I've got it. Hire a butler. A butler? Here we are. You folks must be starving. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll have dinner in town. Oh, yeah? Where, where are you going to get a decent meal at this hour? Yes, Edison, where? Well, uh... Now, you see, it's all settled. You're going to have dinner here just like you planned. <laughs> oh, no, we couldn't. Oh, sure you can. We had beef stew for dinner and we got plenty left. I got it warming on the stove right now. Oh, really, Addison? What is that cab going to get here? Oh, that's liable to take a long time. Saturday night's their big night, you know, and they don't like to come away out here and miss all them extra tips from the short runs in town. So just relax and enjoy yourself. Well, you better have one before they get cold. Oh, you go take that. I'll take this one. Well, I'm going to go out and see to your stew now. <laughs> Say, these are delicious. Try one. I'd rather die first. If you insist on eating those, at least consider your ulcer. <laughs> Now there's something they should teach in that dog training school you and Fifi attend. Oh, have a heart, Lydia. Give him one. <laughs> What's the matter? What happened? He swallowed my earring. Oh, well, was it about the size of that one? Yes, it, it dropped into the dish oh. and he ate it. That's all right. That ain't very big. That won't hurt him. Oh! Now, give me your pants, Mr. Sudley. I beg your pardon? Oh, I brought you this robe to put on while I'm mending that rip in your pants. Let's see. Oh, that ain't too bad. Let's just pull the part at the seams. I'll have that done in no time. Oh, that's a gorgeous pair of shoes you got on, Miss Sudley. But I can see by your face they're killing you. <laughs> Why don't you kick them off and be comfortable? That's my motto. I'll be back in a minute for the pants. I think I'll faint. Uh, Dorothy, how would you like to hire a butler next Saturday night? A butler? What for? It would make a splendid impression on the Sudleys. And, and I think that Hazel should have a little help on an occasion like this. After all, the butler could make the drinks, serve the dinner, and uh, Hazel... Uh... Could stay in the kitchen. That is, with the assistance of a butler, Hazel could concentrate entirely upon preparing the dinner. Excuse me. Telephone call for you, Mr. Baxter. Oh, thank you. Hello? Oh, hello, Hazel. What's the matter? Who? What? So don't worry, Mr. B. And don't take no chances coming home, because they can't go until I let Mr. Sudley have his pants back. George. George, what is it? Speak up, man. George. Speak up. George, what is it? Speak up, man. But Mr. B usually likes a bottle of beer with my beef stew. Beer? That's one beer. And what about you, Mr. Sunley? I'll have beer. Well, come on in. I'm dishing it up. Total disaster. Hazel along with the Sunleys. George, are you sure you made the date for next Saturday? Well, that's what I meant. He must have misunderstood. Well, let's get there in a hurry. Well, I know a shortcut. <laughs> What this reminds me of. It's like that marvelous beef bourguignon that we had in that little cafe outside Chartres in France, remember? It's better. Why can't Henri prepare food like this for us? Addison, we simply 